Hi guys, my name is Conrad Wilson, and welcome back to another episode and devlog on my 3D third person uh, platformer that I am making in Unity. Today, what I've worked on is 2D, 2.5D splines. Um, and I'm just going to run through how it works because it's been pretty fun. Um, so if we have a look over here, this is what I've got set up right now. Um, this spline is the system I developed, and it actually comes as a prefab that you can work with. Uh, let's draw, let's drag a prefab in and show you how it works. First, I've just got to unlink it, um, just so that some of my functions work. Um, other than that, this is how it starts as. Um, as you can see, I'm using a cubic Bezier curve to create the lovely curve that I've got here. Um, what that means is that there's two toggle positions that the curve bases itself off. Um, I cannot grab the other one. <laughs> anyway, there you go, cool. Yeah, these positions. Um, and the yellow uh, counter here is just to show where the origin of the spline is. Um, what I can do is I can grab either end and I can move the points around. And I've actually got the scripts that run this um, working always in the editor constantly. Um, and what this means is that I can also um, update the curve as I move things around. Um, and do some other things like that. Uh, as you can see, you know, um, the waypoints influence the curve as they should. Um, and not only that, I've got trigger volumes that always update themselves um, according to where each waypoint end is. So if I move this around, as you can see, the end waypoint trigger uh, volume moves with it. What I can also do, if you may have seen before, I have some custom buttons over here. Now what these do uh, is run commands in a script to do certain things, um, like adding a waypoint and extending the line. This button uh, very, very, very simply takes the previous curve, uh, the previous segment, like section here, and duplicates it uh, or mirrors its positioning. And from there, you can add as many as like and make the curve as complex as you like, um, completely separately manageable. Not only that, is any new waypoint toggles that link either side of a pre-existing waypoint, they will mirror each other when you edit one or the other, which is pretty neat. So you can do some fancy stuff. If you look closely at the line, you can see it's actually broken up into sections, into segments. Uh, these segments can actually be um, altered in how detailed or undetailed you want them to be in the script space. Um, right now it's set to 10, so that means there's 10 segments here. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right here, uh, that make up the line and the quality of it. See, if I drop this down to something like 6, see it's a lot more jaggedy. If we go down to 5 or 4... Three, let's see, it gets lower and lower. Two, and then one. One is just a straight line um, as it goes from point A to point B without any influence from the uh, toggles at all. But yeah, what, what what this means is that you can scale the quality of your line uh, as much as you want, so that uh, y you don't need to have two complex lines in your scene. You can scale them to however long they are. For example, if I, um, I'll show you a quick feature as well. Right now, I can also reset the spline completely by just clicking this. Lovely, and it goes back to the regular. But uh, yeah, if I show you what it looks like, if I grab a waypoint and stretch it way over there, all right, way over there, way over there, wow, okay, and I make a massive arc like that. Um, <laughs> as you can see, the arc is very jaggedy because there's still only 10 sections or segments covering this um, curve, even though it's really big now. So you can ramp that volume up and uh, 
uh, set it to what 30 and as you can see it's a lot smoother now yeah and that's how it works um, now as for the, how the actual character interacts with the slime um, as I've already shown I have some trigger volumes at the start and end now when the player walks into these um, the script will simply detect it and do a, a nice smooth animation of the character walking up to the position and the camera smoothly loping into the correct position of which is then locked onto the spline. The way I lock the player onto the spline is actually a little bit backwards. I don't lock the player to the spline, I lock the camera. The player simply moves left and right in accordance to its relative position from the camera. So if the camera is locked to the spline and I only move only allow left and right movement with the player, then I will only move left and right along the spline, with the camera's position being updated where the player is on the spline. Um, what this also means is that there's no uh, limitation of on height or, or placing, because as you can see, the line goes straight through the ground here and out the other end. But the player can move along this just as if navigating any terrain. So uh, let's, let's show it. Let's let's show you how it works. Um, so yep, yeah, if I walk up to it, there's that lovely smooth animation, and I am now on the spine. Now things are a bit jaggedy right now, as you saw at the beginning, but it's it's generally smooth. But this corresponds to how um, how high com your your complexity of your line is. And as soon as you reach the end, you'll simply pop off it moving on you get a nice smooth animation just like so um, and as I've shown you um, height doesn't matter so you can still jump but as you can see there the camera is currently locked to the spine's location um, further mechanics would involve um, moving the camera up and down depending on the height of the player on the spine that would be nice but uh, as far as the implementation implementation I've got it's, it's just that. It's just that right now. Um, very simple, getting the basics down nice. But yeah, that's pretty much how the whole system works in gameplay. Um, but I guess I'll just show you some of the code I've been talking about. Um, here's the, the trigger volume code. Very simple. It's just, it's just this. Um, basically, uh, if anything collides with it, if it's the player and it's at the beginning, it sends the code saying so. If it's at the end, at the end, if it hits the collider and it's already on the spline, then it exits, just like that. Um, the this this custom spline, um, as I say, inspector script um, creates a custom editor um, for um, my GUI. Um, I draw my defaults first. That includes my public variables, my serialized private variables, and such, and then I add my new buttons as you can see how I described earlier with just simply running scripts that I attach to them. Now these exist in this script that works um, all the time in the editor as well because I've got this here at the top. Uh, all the segments is holding one array which is just here um, and this works very simply. Um, if I'm in editor, then I'll be mirroring my toggle positions. Um, pretty, pretty much just that all the time. Um, I always draw the line every frame, and I also position the trigger volumes every frame. So that as I move them around live in the editor, everything will always nicely update. Um, reset and spine, very simple. Wipe the array clean. Uh, and generate four new waypoints and toggles. That's all that is. Um, adding a waypoint, uh, I copy the array over into a larger size, uh, which handles the three new positions. Um, and then I just create the three new waypoints uh, and their positions based on the, the previous um, positions, mirroring them as such. Um, yep, simply mirroring the toggled position, uh, check which one it is, um, or if it's closest to, um, and then and then mirroring them, mirroring them, 
Um, other than that, I draw the curve by just running through the whole um, segment array and uh, draw the curves in the correct positions. And I use that based off a method that I have written down here, which is simply writing down in computing forms this mathematical equation, which is for the cubic Bezier point, um, getting that point along the cubic Bezier curve. And uh, I return that, and then I use that in my equations. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, it's been pretty cool, learning all the in-editor stuff, and uh, learning the new things like buttons and things. Um, and I'd love to work on this even further. Hopefully I get the chance to in my upcoming group project that I'll be working, uh, that I'll be taking some of my own um, aspects uh, from and putting into that. And uh, that's all I got for uh, this, this time. So thanks for watching and see ya.